Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I set up my bullet journal for March and this month's theme is going to be a really fun one inspired by board games, so let's get started. I'm starting with my cover spread for the month and this is going to be a nice big double pager and since I'm a total nerd, one of my favorite games is Scrabble and that's what this page is going to be inspired by. I'm starting off by creating five Scrabble tiles and I'm going to spell out March on here. I think that Scrabble is just naturally such a great theme to work into your bullet journal since it is so letter and word based. You can pretty much use these tiles to spell out everything on your page so if you really love Scrabble you can go crazy and use this idea to create a bunch of different spreads for the entire month. I also really liked this because it was really easy to draw since you're basically just drawing squares. But to create more dimension, I also added some nice thick drop shadows for each of these as well, just so that they look more three-dimensional. And of course, to make it obvious that they're Scrabble tiles, you have to have those little numbers that give you the score of each letter. I'm also going to be drawing in the Scrabble board, but I'm going to have a few different elements on this spread, so I want to start from the foreground towards the background. So before I draw that board, I drew in a few pieces of paper. This is going to have my little mini calendar for this spread, but the idea was that it would look kind of like little pieces of paper that you would keep score on. So I layered up two of those, and I did a mock score sheet on the second page so that the idea would come across, and then I wrote out the actual calendar on the top paper. Then working backwards, I drew in the board for the game. I didn't get too technical with this and make sure I had all the right number of squares. And I kind of messed it up a little because I created an even number of squares each way. I don't think it really matters how many squares you do, but you just wanna have an odd number. That way you have an actual middle so that when you color in these diagonal patterns that I have here, that they actually meet. But if you mess up a little like I did, it's totally okay too because the score sheet and the Scrabble tiles cover up a little bit of that so you might be able to get away with that. I colored in some of these squares so that it would look like those tiles that are like double letter, triple word, that kind of thing. Again, I'm not trying to get it exactly like a Scrabble board because that would just require more precision than I'm capable of. So I just made sure to get sort of like a vague pattern so that you can at least get the idea across. Then to add some more objects to the left side of this page, I added a book, which I wanted to look kind of like a Scrabble dictionary. And I'm going to write my goals and projects for the month here, and then fill in another mock score sheet at the bottom, just to fill in the space and add a little more decoration. I'm just gonna color in some of my board here with a tan colored colored pencil. I didn't have a marker that was going to be a light enough color, and I just wanted this to be a subtle little effect, so that's why I'm using a colored pencil here. I thought this Scrabble inspiration would work perfectly for the monthly page as well, so I'm just gonna continue that theme here as I create a large calendar. I like that this really allowed me to do a different layout than I'm used to by running March down vertically down the side of the page. I typically never set type vertically like this because I went to graphic design school and it was drilled in me to never do that, but I don't think my teacher's meant to count Scrabble in this definition, so in my brain I can totally get away with that. Again, I drew in a Scrabble board inspired grid. Of course, it's not going to be exact because I only need seven boxes across for the week, but I tried to get it as close as possible and adding that color really makes all the difference because otherwise it kind of just looks like a regular old calendar grid. But once you add those pops of color in there, you can tell that it's supposed to be a game board, at least I think so. I made sure not to use colors that were too dark, especially in the two corners. So I just outlined those with the red instead of coloring it all in. That way I'll be able to actually write stuff in that square if I need to. Moving on to the next spread, which I am really excited about. I designed this little Candyland inspired game board. I just thought this idea was so genius, if I must say so myself. So I'm starting off with this like squiggly shape all across the spread. And then I separated this into 31 sections, one for each day of the week. Oh, I guess I should mention this is a tracker page. So I'm gonna use it as a mood tracker, but you could also use it as a habit tracker if you want to, if there's one specific thing you wanna concentrate on for the month. So each of these little tiles is going to be designated for a day. And then I'm just going to start filling in some areas around this snake shape. So I pulled inspiration from the actual Candyland game. They have little fun candy inspired things like gumdrop mountains, 
Lollipop Valley, I think it is. And this one that I'm drawing here might look really weird and random, but I think it's supposed to be like a molasses swamp. It's not some like weird poop creature, I promise. It is based on the actual game. And there's also this candy cane forest. And of course, at the very end, there is candy land. So for this one, you wanna go all out and draw the craziest little candy castle that you can. Fill it with gingerbread houses, gumdrops, anything you can think of. The thing I really liked about this page is that it's going to be really colorful once I add all the color to these illustrations, but it's going to be especially colorful once I get to the end of the month and all of my moods for the day are filled in. I also really like how the tiles for this tracker are a little bit bigger because in the past when I've done mood trackers, if I just have like one little circle or tiny little shape for a mood, I get really indecisive about labeling my entire day as one thing. So for this one, if I want to, I can even like split each day or tile into a couple of different colors and moods if I choose to. So we'll see how good I am about filling this in throughout the month. And I'll post a photo of how it turns out at the end of the month on Instagram. So make sure you're following me there if you want to see how that comes out. Candyland was one of my favorite games growing up. I think it's because you really don't need to use much brain power for this game. It's 100% based on luck. So if you lose, it's not because because you are bad at strategy or because you're not smart and since I'm a super competitive person that makes me feel a lot better when I lose. You could also create this page with a shoots and ladders theme. I think that would work well if you aren't a fan of Candyland. Once all my coloring is done I just went back in with a white gel pen to add some highlighted areas. I think this extra step really helps to make things look more dimensional especially when you're working with a lot of colors. Now moving on to the weekly layouts for the month. I'm going to be doing the same general weekly layout for each of the four weeks in February, but I'm going to have sort of like a different game theme for each of these. So the basic layout is going to be these four rectangle shapes per page, except on the last page, one of them is split into two for two different sections. You can also just keep it as one if you only need one miscellaneous notes page. I just like to split it into my to-do list and then my meal planning. This first one is going to be based on a classic game, Monopoly. And I thought the shape of these squares would be perfect to replicate the deed cards that you have in that game. I'm not really sure why I awkwardly did five boxes and then started coloring before finishing the rest of them, but there are going to be seven of them and you can see how I'm just filling in the header spaces right now with these bright colors that look like the actual properties in the game. I also added a gray outline to these cards because those are going to be the actual shape of the card and then on the card there's an outline as well if that makes sense. So if you, if you look at an actual game card, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then I just created these headers for the dates that look a little bit like the type on the cards as well. For the colors, I tried to pick colors that stood out really well and balanced each other. So I tried to pick a warm color and also a cool color. But I also just like to pick some of my favorite colors in the game. I don't know if you're like this, but in Monopoly, I have like certain color schemes that I always wanna get. I love the yellow cards, the orange cards, and the green cards. And obviously I had to include the blue ones there because it's boardwalk and everybody always wants that property. But yeah, that was just a personal thing. You can obviously choose whatever colors you want. And then I thought since I divided the last section into two cards, these would also be the perfect shape to replicate the community chest and chance cards. So I just outlined those in orange and yellow. And I didn't wanna fill in the whole thing because I thought that might be a bit bold and then it would be difficult to actually write stuff over that. So I just created these outlines in a light gray marker just so that you can tell what it is and with the colors, ho hopefully that's a little more obvious without having a solid color block. So for the next weekly layout, we're going to be doing the same thing, sectioning this off into these four areas per page. This time my boxes are going to have rounded corners because I'm going to turn them into playing cards. Just your regular old cards with like hearts and diamonds and that kind of thing. This one's a super fast and easy one, so I think this is a great option, especially if you just wanna make something a little more quickly. So for this one, I use the date to kind of look like the number on a playing card. And then of course I have the different suits and things and I'm just alternating between red and black. I really like how in the end this page looks so classic with the red and black color scheme. It's easily identifiable because everybody knows what playing cards look like and it's just very fast and simple. And again, I added drop shadows to each of these cards because since this is a pretty basic page, I just thought it needed a little something extra to make everything look a little more dimensional. For the next spread, we're going to start the same exact way with those rounded corner shapes because we're doing another set of cards, but this time they're going to be Uno cards. 
So for each of these, I'm creating this like sideways oval shape across each of the cards. And then for the area outside of that, I'm coloring it in with a bright color. So I'm pretty sure Uno cards basically just have four colors in the entire deck. It's just red, blue, yellow, and green. I'm just sticking to those and just trying to organize the colors on the spread so that it's balanced. I know for this one, you end up with a little less space to write. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick to just writing in the white area since that's not much. I think I'll just try to write over the color space as well and just kind of treat it as a background. This is pretty bold, so if you have more like pastel colors, this might work a little better, but I wanted to stick to the bold color scheme so that it looks a little more like the classic game. And finally, for the last weekly spread, I'm going to be starting with just normal rectangle shapes this time instead of the rounded corners. And these are going to be very basic boxes. There's not going to be anything special going on with them because I'm going to be decorating the background instead. So once I have all of these boxes drawn in, I'm going to start drawing in a checkerboard pattern as the background for these boxes. I'm starting in the middle because this gets very confusing. I actually kept messing up a page with this pattern because I would just like color in the wrong squares. So I would really suggest starting in the middle so that hopefully you won't mess this up and have to start over like I did. And this might seem like a really trivial thing, but it really matters how big the squares are. And this is really important because if you make them too small, your page is going to look like a pair of vans. And if you make them too big, they're going to look like kitchen tiles. So for my spread, I made my squares four by four, but I think even this is a touch too small. So I would suggest for you guys to make your squares five by five or six by six. I just honestly didn't want to recreate this spread for a third time. So I just left it at that. Okay, so those are all the pages for the month. I'm just gonna do a quick flip through here. We went through a lot of games this month and I tried to stick to classic games and also my favorite ones. If you guys have another idea for a board game that you could use, make sure you tag me on Instagram so that I can see or leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite board game was growing up or your favorite game now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.